Hey guys, we're gonna do something strange here. Um, uh, Gray Eagle 54, and I'll be your host. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Derail Valley, and this is your first screen you will see once the the uh, game boots up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and run you through a small tutorial here of what to do, how to do it, the quick way to get done with the tutorial, and make a couple of bucks while you're doing it. So what we're going to do is welcome to Derail Valley, and this is the, we're going to teach you what the keys are, so you take and look around, do all your good stuff and that. Okay, now it wants to show you how to dash. Anybody who's played with VR knows that the F key makes you dash. So we dashed enough and it told us to go get our radio. To sprint you have to hold down left shift. Normal game controls apply. Um, if you want to get controls there is a way to get a control manual that shows you everything that their controls do so you can actually do it okay now they want to show you how to drop and pick up stuff for the simple fact is during the game you're going to use the hell out of it so what you're going to do is you're going to pick pick that up that's your quick guide it tells you what the shunner is all about you want to read it it's really smart to read it and you, this is your remote control. It actually tells switches what to do. Okay? To hide things, you press tab or the center mouse wheel, and it does it pretty good. So we'll make that go away. It wants you to take and get up in your shunner now, which you can jump by hitting space and jump up onto it. Easiest way to get in is look at the window press F you're in it now to start up the shunner it's actually one two three switches this is a rotating button put your cursor at the bottom slide a little forward and it starts the engine okay now I have a mod that uh, has lights on it and it makes the actual lights of the locomotive work well. Right now they're on. See, I got lights to the rear, lights to the front. Um, but you can you can get mods for this game. Um, I'll have a whole tutorial on how to download mods, load mods, all that good stuff. But for right now, let's go through these controls. Your throttle is. U up and Y for down on your throttle. Okay? Your house brakes are L to engage, K to get it off. You can either use the mouse, grab a hold of it, and move it, or you can use the two buttons if you're playing in PC mode. If you're playing in VR mode, you know how to do it because you just reach out and grab it. Now, what they want you to do is you go outside here. And also, X lets you sit down. It actually just makes you shorter. It's like a uh, half crouch. So, you actually can see out some of the windows. Because some of them are really bad. The uh, steam locomotive looking out is really fun. you got to lean out. And this is lean out, which is um, Q or E next to the W key. Uh, so you can lean left or right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put her in gear. And that forward is forward. And to get reverse is back. And those will be the J for the forward and the H to bring it back enough about keys let's drive the train the little shunter handles very easily 
Uh, it's not anything exciting. You know, it's not going to take off and run away from you. Um, you use your brakes to stop. You can actually leave it on low idle where it'll move and stop it. But what you want to do is you want to go out here past the uh, switch. So about here you want to come off and get on idle because what you want is that switch just at the back of your engine. So you apply your brakes without hitting the rubber rail right there and go over here. Now they want you to take and re-rail a train car. So we're going to take and instead of running, we're going to dash a few times. I like dashing. It's like teleport. Now you're here. So what you want to do is you want to pull up your comms radio and you can do that with the center mouse wheel. All you have to do is take and roll the wheel, get the arrow on what one you want, let up on it and it'll pick it up. Now rolling the center mouse button Oh, they want us to change that stupid switch first. Right mouse button zooms in. You change the switch. Okay, now you're going to re-rail a car. See how it says re-rail? You just roll your mouse button, it'll go to your options in there. I've got a few options once we get out of tutorial. So now you want to go to re-rail. It's going to box the vehicle that you want to re-rail. You can actually put it on any car or locomotive to re-rail. And then you're going to take and bring the blue box. You see it made a second one below the big box. And that's where you're going to put it down. It's going to ask you and confirm. So now you put it back on the tracks. Now you want to put it together so you can actually take it somewhere. So what we do, run back out here. And this is, sorry that they made the tutorial like this. I would have had you roll in and check it. What's wrong with this car? Ask you stupid questions. But, you know, well, the devs did it their way. So now, make sure you get it in reverse. See my headlights change. Headlight went bright. When you change directions with the headlight mod, it makes it come on in the end direction that you're traveling. Which for an early access game, this thing's got plenty of mods. There are a few I recommend. We'll get into that in a later video. For right now, we just want to get you to where you're through the tutorial and you're on your way to making money. So you can jump up here. You can operate the train with the keyboard from anywhere standing on the engine. So if I want to give it fuel, all I do is press the U key and I can give it fuel. If I want to put on brakes or let off brakes, all I have to do is press K or M to let off. Train brake is the M and the N. M is in Mary, N is in Nora. And K and L are your independent brakes. If you don't know much about trains, you're going to know plenty by the time you get done with this game. Won't make you an engineer like you slept at Holiday Inn Select last night, but it'll help. Word of caution, when you got the shunter, you want to start off easy. Because if you start off fast, it will spin the wheels. So don't floorboard it, you know. Let's build up a little speed. I don't want to take two weeks to go get the car. Take your throttle down. Finger on that L button. 
slide up to it. Now you didn't bump it, okay? Trick to coupling. You want to bump the car until it moves just a tad. Lock your independent brake and then turn your throttle off. What that does is it compresses the two pipes with the springs that are your shock absorbers between the train, these two guys right here. Compresses them, it makes it easier to couple. Because when they're just touching, barely, it's a pain in the neck trying to get it to couple. Once again, you use the mouse, pick up the eyelet. You can pick up the one here, which I'm gonna fold that one back up, or you can pick up the one off your engine. Makes no difference. Spin it down with the lock. What you do is click on it, and then you can either crouch and grab the hose, come up holding the mouse down, wiggle around a little bit, and it's gonna lock up on the other hose. Then you have two valves to turn on, and you now have air to the train. This takes the brakes off. If you're dealing with a heavy train, turn your train brake on uh, if you're on a hill, because it could be messy. Now you get to come in here. You have now learned how to do those things. Congratulations, you're now a train driver. Take a hit. And you have all those certifications, which we'll look at real quick. Your license to haul freight. And there's a key here. You want to hold on to it. Right now, I don't want to even have that blue streak in my dashboard because I want you to read a couple of these. This is your freight hauler license. You don't have to keep these on you. This is your DE2, which is that engine. And this is train driver. This just means that you've picked up those certifications. Uh, your DVR to haul freight, your, your shunter, and your DVR train driver. So now you've done all your little goodies. Now let's pull that key back up. You're going to go over here to a locker. Put the reticle, not the key. You put the key on it, it doesn't do anything. You got to put that little point on it, and it says use left mouse button to unlock. Pick it up, pick up the map. We dropped the derail valley guide on the ground. These guides are a plethora of information. And we got what? Wow, we got cash. Shh, don't tell anybody. Actually, it gives you $2,000 to start. So you're going to go in here. And you're going to pick up your train basics. Now, here's something I want you to learn right off the bat. Though These two, you're going to need right away. That you're going to need that you're going to definitely need. This one, you don't need it on you. Press G, drop it. You don't need this one on you. You don't need this one on you. You need that. You need that. And that's all you need for right now. These three that I just dropped will end up in a little shack, which you'll learn about as time goes on. It's in your derail valley guide you go to your guide driver basics find new jobs accepting jobs loading and unloading fees insurance uh, fee tolerance in other words you can't go crazy servicing vehicles licenses now these guys right here is item management if you wish to get rid of something permanently, you put it in a dumpster. If you drop it on the ground, the next town you go to, it's going to be in the little shack. So remember, to delete is dumpster, to save it, and it be on the desk in your little engineer's shack. Just drop it on the ground anywhere. It'll get there, believe me. 
and they call it at your home but your, your home is in a different spot if you look on the map that little red to look around your map press alt and when it's not enabled in the tutorial but there's a little red house in between Forest Central and the farm on that track that actually to the oil well. No, it's to the farm. That, that one goes to the farm. But there's a little red shack there. That's your actual house. It's right next to a set of tracks, believe it or not, like you drive your car to go to work. It's kind of cool. Anyhow, we'll get to that later. Uh, station map schedules and maps you want. Get up in the cab. Now, you don't want to get in a hurry. Um, you can access the pause menu. You can pull up your bank balance. That is the wallet. It's being a butt. Maybe I need to be outside. Yeah, I do. Now you have a wallet. Your wallet is what money you have on you. Actually, what money, all the money you have in the world. And it's being a butt. Pull up your world map that way. It's just hitting escape and pulling up what you want. To get it to go away, you can just hit tab or the center wheel on your mouse. Uh, if you want to look around the map, it's now going to allow me to do it. There's the wallet. And I'm going to show you how to organize this too. World map. If you want to look around your world map, see now I can actually move it. That is your home home. And you can actually fast travel to it. It costs money to fast travel. So I suggest not cool. So you find movement on the map useful. Uh, you can take locomotives with you. You can just fast travel with just you if you're looking for an object. Or you just want to visit a store. Things like that. that. Okay. Now let's get rid of that. Get up in here. It's nice and quiet in here. We'll, just, we'll stay in here for a while. Um, let off the brakes. You want to change your direction. See we're in reverse. And let's give it a little throttle. Now I'm going to show you what train slip, wheel slip looks like. See that light come on? You can make the wheel slip pretty easy. And what did we forget to do? We forgot to change the switch going out the door. So now you caught your first faux pas. What did we do? We forgot to change the switch. So now we need to back into the station again. And I'm glad you get to see me do this. Because I've done this, I did this in the original time I went through the tutorial. And I'm doing it again because I'm preoccupied talking to y'all. But I did this the first time, so don't feel lonesome. You're not gonna be the first person to do this. And you're not gonna be the last. Everybody does it probably once forgets to change a switch and it's aggravating but now to remember where you can change a switch at the front end of your vehicle needs to be a little bit back I just made it a lot back because I hit the gas instead of hitting brakes so now you want to bring up your command radio and you want to be on switch you want to change it 
so that you can get out of here and go straight. And we didn't hurt the car much more than it already been hurt. I mean, it was already derailed in here. So now we go back on forward, give her a little juice, and let's get out of here. I'm having a day. Come on, monster. My keyboard's being touchy. That's more what I want to do. And you really don't have an RPM meter in here. All you've got is a speedometer, a heat gauge, sand, fuel, air pressures. You don't have a, a tachometer to tell you how fast the engine is running. You'll find in the big diesels and uh, tachometer that you can use to know how many percent you're putting to the ground. Uh, here's a good thing to do. Pull up your comms radio. When you go past this switch, it is advisable. Coast past it, and it just told you to... Uh, And we just change that switch to where it's on the straight line. It doesn't run you back up in the garage. Because if you run back up in the garage, it's not a smart idea to do that with a train when you're in a hurry. It causes a mess. And you can derail this train. This is not like other simulators on the market that you don't derail. You just get dock points or time or whatever. You get dock bonuses. This thing, you can actually run it off the track. And when you do, you damage the engine, cars, track, and you get billed for it. You got to pay for it. Um, there's a lot of people that get too wrapped up in doing jobs, and they'll do the jobs, and then they'll make a mistake. Uh, they will take and spend too much at the store and not worry about having money for fuel. I've seen this more than once. Now, here's where they want you to take out the station map. This is the steel mill. I mean, you got maps for every station in here, which is cool. Now, Steel mill is the first one in line. You see the little black circle? That is the uh, service or roundhouse. Uh, the green A is the service shed, and the little round circle is a roundhouse. The station, in other words, where you pick up your jobs and stuff, is the little house looking thing and on my screen it looks pink but that's the station house so you're going to be going from this is the way actually the station lays northeast is to your right and southwest is to your left on the track so you'll be coming in from the northeast so you need the first three switches left the fifth switch first four switches le are left the fifth switch needs to be to the right because you're following that track down so if you ran down this track and I'm not going to do it on this one but if you ran down that track you'd see how to get there but you want your points to equal out and do what you want them to do Pop your command radio out, zoom out, hit it on that switch. Now you see the switch, it's faced the wrong way. Left click, and you have changed the switch. They've actually lined up all the switches for you to go into the shed, so there's no 
superior reason of why you should keep your your switch com out I call it a switch com because it tells the switches what to do um, but you can you know you can actually zoom in on the next switch try to light it up and see what it's doing see now they've already got that one on left so you know you, you double check yourself me I know they're switched You can go up to about half throttle, see where I'm at, with the switcher and it won't slip. When you slip, you're going to screw wheels up. Also, if you get above 30-ish and the yard, it gets really inky because things start happening real fast. Slower is better. Uh, once you get more confident, you can speed up, but in the beginning, uh, 15 to 20 is probably your best idea. That way you're not waiting on Moses to come, but you're not, you know, jackrabbit run through and miss things. Because believe me, when you crash into the back end of another train, it costs money. And it's not fun. Now we're going to take this and we're going to go up into that shed. Realize this, once you stop, it shuts off. The reason I say that, you'll see. So we're going to go up in the shed. They've already lined the switches up for you. We go into the shed, and we get to here. You're going to want to start applying brake, but you don't want to stop. Okay, not yet. So you let your brake off. Keep rolling. Give it a little power, maybe. And stop. It shut down, see? This locomotive is going to stay here for servicing. Let's get you to another locomotive for which you'll use for new jobs. So, what you did by not stopping, I'll show you. You got the rear end of it in here. Now if you want to use this track to park something on, like another locomotive, you can. You don't have to worry about it. This is a round or the turntable. Not a roundhouse, turntable. And to make it work, that gets it started. And you're going to hear that dumb click. Sounds like somebody dropping a barbell. And the further up you go, the faster it turns. Hear that click? That tells you it's lining up on a track. So when you get around there, slow down, stop, and it'll lock in. When you hear that kerchunk, you know it's locked. Also on a turntable, visually inspect that the rails are straight in. Because if they're not, you go down in the hole. We're not licensed for that yet, so we can't use it. But that is the D6. This is the D4. Or 3. I don't know what it is. It's the little one. I always call it the little one. It's the shunter. Jump up in the shunter. And you can F dash into it. Remember how we started the other one? Three switches. Hold the starter over. No, we didn't warm it up or nothing. You don't have to check oil, none of that. It may come later, I don't know. But you want to check your oil pressure and your pipe pressures which I'm looking at them already and I know where they are don't get in a jackrabbit hurry go to about the center of the turntable stop 
Now there's two ways to move the turntable. One is with the control I just showed you. The other is push it. You can actually push the turntable kind of like old days of grinding stone wheat and stuff. You push it around the circle. If you guys have played uh, Conan Exiles, it's like the throw machine. But you can actually line it up with this. So if you miss and you don't want to jack with that control, just run out here, grab a hold of the bar and go. You don't have to press anything, just put it there. And don't run over to the, the thing and then climb up. Hit F, you know, get it done. Now, let your brakes off. It's going to tell you to go over to the uh, station, but don't do that just yet. What you want to do is get off this stupid turntable. Otherwise, you dash all the way over and all the way back. So, we're going to the station. I want to get my locomotive close. I want to get it over here where I'm going to use it. I don't want to be continuously having to run back and forth to it 10 miles away. So now we are over here by the station. Throw some brakes on. We went through a switch for a reason. Unless you're going to service, you will not go back through that switch for a while. So pop your comm out, change it. Now it's lined up to go into that storage line. Most stations are lined up as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of stuff. One and two can be your um, service lines, which this one is. One and two are over there. Three, four, five, six. The loading line is seven. Then eight, nine, and all that's out here. Or no, that's B yard. And B yard goes from one through eight. Or six, whatever, I don't remember. You have to look at the map. Let's look at the map real quick. Station map. It's right there. So your station is set up as B section. Then you have uh, three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are all single lines. The splits are down closer on the uh, three, four, five, and six. Your one and two is your actual service lines. They just don't show them as one and two. They only show those kind of lines unless they're active service lines. In other words, cars will be parked on them. We go to the second page. This is B section. Remember, northeast is up there. So one is your left rail, which is real, real close to you real close to you. I got the hiccups. And 8 is your far right. Now E, or excuse me, I is inbound or incoming. O is outbound. S is storage. That's all you need to remember about the yards. O is outbound. I is inbound. S is storage. You'll pick up empty cars from storage. You'll fill them up and put them on outbound. When you come into a station, nine times out of ten, you will go to the inbound spur. Or, it'll have you split after you drop some of your cars in the inbound spur. I've had that happen too. Which, the steel mill has two, two inbounds. Six I and 3i. So you got two inbounds and they're in two different yards. Three eyes out here, six eyes back there by the uh, actual mill. 
So now we go to the child. Oh, there's money, money, money. Actually, it's a hundred bucks they give you to pay your fees. Okay, press your fees. And it says I damaged that car. It cost thirteen thousand dollars because I damaged it. That was when I hit it up against the breaker. Yeah. So what? Guess what? You need to pay $100 to take care of all your debt. So you go to your wallet. Doom. Went in and picked that up. There we go. Now you have everything and your wallet still has two grand in it. So you can actually damage that car and just pay a hundred bucks. They don't want you to get broke. Suggestion here, go ahead and pick up one of the jobs and drop it. I'll show you this. It's a little tip. You see the job, it's a freight hauling job. Your machine cannot haul it could not have enough butt and that one you can haul but it only pays eight grand and you have to go to Harbor Town to get it you know to get paid so we really want to pick up something that's gonna pay decent but is not gonna be ten years to get it done uh, this one just takes a shunter's license, which we don't have. But I'm going to show you how to get it. Uh, it pays six grand. Uh, this one you got to have extras. This one pays five. That one's got long train. This one pays 5400 and that's another freight job. So these three, pick them all up, hit tab, hold on to them, because if you go out of the area a little bit, they may disappear. And we're only going to do them one at a time. So what you do is you're going to well, go over here, and I'll show you why you have to get a shunting license. There's number one, you aim like you want the job. Prince a piece of paper says no you can't. Let's put this away. Pick that up. Denied. You do not have the proper licenses. Guess what? Watch this. We have paid our fees, so our fees are paid up. Go to licenses, click confirm. You have freight hall and you have driver. What we want is the next one down, and look at that, it's only a grand. Voila! And we have... Go to the wallet. We have $1,000 in our wallet. Pick it up. It's worth having the shunting license. Pick it up. Congratulations! You now can pull stuff within yards. Cost you a grand. Okay? dump it'll be over here watch let's just start that job before we get any further this is how you start a job so we want to take and drag stuff around remember you can only pull 400 tons with the shunter you can go a little over that probably 450 430 and it gets really difficult to move it. If you get on any kind of grade, you'll get stuck. It pushes everything to the maximum, which is something you really don't want to do because oil costs money, diesel costs money, sand costs money, everything costs money. Wheels cost money, body damage costs money. Okay, you don't want to 
screw the pooch and end up broke or in debt and not be able to get yourself out of it. So, yes, we're going to take the job. It gives you this. Plan your trip ahead, it tells you, which is true. I'm going outside so I can light this up real good so you can see it. You're picking up four cars and you're going to unload the scrap metal and then you're going to take and store the cars. So you're going to be storing the empties on 4S which is in A section which is behind the station. You're going to pick it up on A6I. Remember I said the station's got two different um, incoming lines and that's what you're seeing. And I'm going to show you how to organize your, your stuff. Uh, go to your radio, press tab while it's up, slide over, drop it in the first slot. Press tab, go over to your station map. This is how I do my bar. It makes things easier to find. Put your world map in three. Put your wallet in four or ten, it doesn't matter. And then like train basics. Until you read this stuff holding on you. I have read it. But train basics is one of the good ones to learn. Because it tells you how to hook up. How to conserve fuel. How to keep your brakes from overheating, derailing. Tells you what the comms radio will do. Tells you about overheating. Um, tells you all kinds of stuff. Okay, damage tips. Here you go, signage and speeds. Um, if it's round with a red circle around it, you take 5 times 10, 50. Anything, add a 0 to it, and that's your speed. So if it's a 12, it's 120. Okay? Uh, below that, you may see the two signs below that, which is higher limit and lower limit. That's going to be your next speed sign. It may be a ways. It may be short distance. But leave enough room so you can actually safely get yourself down so you don't derail. Um, uh, here's your other part of your signage grades. Okay, if your grade is more than uh, 0.05%, Okay, it shows uphill. If it's 0.5% down or minus, it just shows downhill. If it's flat, the one in the middle. Now, if it's a grade greater than 0.5, it will show up on your grade sign. Like you see that plus 1.2, that is a 1%, 1 percent, 1.2 percent grade. Okay. You won't find any grades bigger than, I think it's three, in this whole game. So you're not going to get really pressed unless you take some really stupid routes with long trains. So always remember, when you go to the harbor, you're going downhill to get there, but you got to go uphill to get out. That's one thing to remember. Okay, now I told you if you drop stuff, it's going to end up in a place. This is that place. Remember that stuff I dropped? Guess what? Here it is. And me, I don't need certain things like that. Like that. 
like that. I need that. I think I've gotten rid of everything else. Yep. Whoops. Got to the totally key. One through zero is your numbers. If it ends up more, it'll just end up out here in no man's land. And you have to do it by pressing down tab and sliding the mouse. This is also how you can access it without using the roller wheel and trying to hold down the center mouse button. So, now what you're going to do, you know that 6i is in A section, or B section. So here's B6O. Can I read that right? Oops. Not that one. I want the job. The job! There it is. It's in A6I, it's not in B6. So now you see the difference. There are one through six or two through six or two through eight. It's not in three I either. Okay, to pick it up, it's in A6I. So that means it's in the back. But, yeah, might as well show you that you're going to put it in A4. So you're not going to have to come out to B section at all. Which is actually cool. It keeps you back in the back where you don't have to worry about a bunch of different switches. But anyhow, you want to go back here because now you got to do some switch changing. I do this before I take the job sometimes because I know what the cars look like. Let's do some teleporting. A6I is right here. Those are scrap metal cars. And if you want to get on top, press up right on the edge. And you can get up and you can go through them. And you got four scrap cars. Okay. And we've been a while on this video, so you're through the tutorial right here because you can actually save. Okay, if you can't save, you're not completely through the tutorial. Once you get through the tutorial, it saves everything you got. And in another video, I'm going to actually show you how to start again, fresh, if you feel you've messed up. Um, there is a way. It's a little complicated. Look for that in a future video. Uh, and it's going to be tips, tricks and how to start over. Um, there's not too much to show you other than coupling and unloading and I'm going to save that for the next video. So, hey, if you love me, fine. If you don't like me, fine. Hit a thumbs up, a thumbs down, subscribe, hit the bell. You're going to see videos popping out from me all the time on this game. It's going to be quite a trip. We're going to do a complete playthrough until we've got everything in the game. And I'm only going to use mods that help you. Uh, no major cheats. In other words, you guys aren't going to see money that's stupid. There are money cheats and there is ways to do it. You can find that out on YouTube. If that's the way you want to play, fine. If that's not, you know, fine too. But I'm going to show you how to make money. I'm going to show you the jobs that you do not want to ignore. I'm going to show you jobs that you want to ignore for a while. But all the jobs on that table, the logistical, the freight, and the shunter jobs are really good 
okay? They all ser serve a purpose. Shunner jobs get you quick money within the station you're in. Freight jobs get you money for moving from town to town to town to see what's in those, those areas. Uh, going to the mines and to the forests, that is a one-way trip. Getting there, have some money. Because you need to go in there, pick up outbound load, go down to the sawmill. If you want to haul more logs, guess what? You got to go back to the forest. Once you haul out everything in there, it takes a while for the game to re regenerate empty cars. So the amount of cars that you can haul out aren't going to be there. If you haul in new cars that are empties, you'll have shunner jobs and you'll have uh, runs to the sawmill. So the logistical runs from the sawmill back to the forests help you. The logistical runs from the steel mill to the iron ore mines help you. There's a flow chart, and before we go, I'm going to show it to you. There's a flow chart in the station, and this is really um, the flow of the goods, okay? So what you're doing is manufacturing. Let me get close enough so you can see this. So you haul logs from the forest to the sawmill. The sawmill makes boards that go to the factories. The factories make goods. The goods go to towns or to be shipped out at the harbor. Uh, you go to the farm. You pick up food. It goes to... Uh, some goes to the city. Some of it goes to the food factory town. Um, you haul back tractors and stuff from the harbor to the, the farm to the coal mine to the iron ore mines. This is all a circle of manufacturing, supply raw goods, finished product, and sending it off. When you finally get enough money to run military loads, that's where the major money's at. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed doing it for you. Hey, any questions, please leave a comment in the subscription and a like, and I'll get back to the comments as often as I can. Live streaming will probably be on, I don't know, probably Saturdays, um, midday. Everybody's off on Saturday most of the time. Um, I'll try to do a, a live stream once a week. I may do two. Uh, they will be uh, announced in the video previous. So, like, this weekend, come Saturday, I may do a live stream, I may not. Depends on how many videos I get pumped out between now and then. So this is your intro to Derail Valley. Enjoy the game, I do. And this has been Gray Eagle 54 Thank you so much for watching.